This guy is. He's got some pontooning to do. Machine Freaks, welcome back to another 3D Machines production. We have the King Quad here. It is torn apart, as you guys saw in the last production. We took the top end off. We have it served up on two nice paper plates. It doesn't get any fancier than this. Just to give you a recap, I bought this four-wheeler. The previous owner told me and disclosed that it both smoked and it didn't idle which those two things to me aren't too big of an issue as long as the price is right. The price is right, okay? These things, I'm not sure exactly what they go for. I'm gonna say 35, 4,500. You tell me in the comment section below. 2014, King Quad, 750. When it's running right after, you know, cause I'm gonna fix it. Are you guessing in the comment section how much I spent on this? I can see here that the valves are, there's a lot of black soot on these. This piston doesn't look too bad. So I think we're gonna be in luck here, really. I wanna check to make sure the rings are up to par. Once the rings are up to par, then we're good there, as long as the cylinder walls are good and the piston's good. Some of you may be educated in this department, some of you may be still learning, and some of you probably just wanna see this thing rip tater chip. No matter why you're here, I appreciate you being here. Let's see what's really going on. I think the most important thing at this point in time is to see whether or not the rings are in spec. So we'll start with those. We'll remove them real quick. We want these in spec because we want the most performance out of our engine as possible. If these rings are, are loose in the cylinder, you're just not gonna be able to get as much power. Also, oil can leak through there. Our scoring on our piston looks phenomenal. I'm gonna fish my first ring on the bottom. The top is the bottom of the cylinder, if that makes sense. This is flipped around, and then your piston goes up and down in there. So this is the bottom. That's probably confusing. I wanna put this in without scratching the hell out of it. The cylinder itself is in excellent shape. The ring's in there pretty square. This is a feeler gauge. This is the spec. The gap in between the rings shouldn't be any thicker than that. So that's the magic number right there. It's way too thick, it's way too big. Yeah, we're at a point nine. We're supposed to be at a point two. That, that ring is completely shot. So it makes sense why this thing's smoking. There we go, that gap looks way better on that second ring. I just checked it with the feeler gauge, believe it or not, that one is in spec. So we actually caught it right in time, we did the right thing by taking it apart. I found it before it got to our second ring, which would have caused more damage, less power, more smoke, not good, so that's good there. The bad news is, when I was cleaning this out, this isn't water in here, this is oil. I sprayed it out with water first, but then I oiled it down with some fogging oil. I accidentally dropped it and I lost one of the shims. So I'm going to have to, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm going to reseat the valves. While I get it this far apart, I'm gonna reseat those so that we have a nice, tight, ready to go machine. It's just silly that I dropped the bucket. That's what these little silver things are. You can see there's one missing that's up on the shelf. That's not the one I lost. This one fell out and then the shim behind it fell out. And it's somewhere in the yard here and I haven't found it. It's about the size of a Tic Tac. Maybe even smaller and it's silver and sand is white-ish silver. So it's hard to find. Well, with the help of a caliper, I found out that all of the shims are the same, so nobody probably has taken this thing apart yet. They all measure the same. I didn't bother writing the third one down, uh, and the fourth one, as you guys know, I lost. So because I'm going to reseat these valves, I'm not sure if they sell a kit where it's slightly, let's see, I need it to be, I need the shims to be smaller, correct? Because I'm, I'm bringing the valve closer to them. I should go smaller. I'll probably get a whole nother set of four, uh, slightly smaller than this, uh, thinner than this, so that way I'll still be in spec. This is getting a little too technical. 
Basically, this is math, okay? And if the equation doesn't equal what it, it says it's gonna be, like two plus two equals four, right? Well, right now, this is two plus one equals three. Three is not equal to four. You need it to equal four to have the engine work properly. So I'm gonna order shims and I'm gonna order a ring set. No need for a cylinder, no need for a piston. We'll be ready to rock and roll with a relatively low budget. That's absolutely phenomenal, if you ask me. We're in the big bad escape. The absolute chick magnet. Hide your, hide your wives, you guys. I'm gonna go get a, a valve spring tool so I can remove the valves. That way I can see how bad the seats are. Because I'd like to get the seats in ordered as soon as possible so that way we can get this thing going as soon as possible. I did order the seals right off the bat. I have ordered the rings right off the bat. This guy, he's got some pontooning to do. That guy is just going, man. I bet you I could catch up to him in the old chick magnet. Like nothing. There is an event coming up here, right below me, I think. Something hog or whatever. There's a big mud bash, and uh, that's where this kid broke this four-wheeler. So I'd like to get it fixed to go there. The last time I was at a mud event was way back in the day when I first started my YouTube channel. Probably like 2011, 2012. Yeah, so it's been a while. See, me, unlike Braden Price, I learn Braden Price just keeps on breaking stuff. That's Mr. Pontoon. Got the part. Now headed back, gonna check that top end out. As you can see, that valve doesn't look too bad. And the seat doesn't look that bad either. So overall, I'm impressed with the top end of this machine. It doesn't need crazy work. It doesn't need crazy parts, which is awesome. That being said, parts are ordered. They are on their way. I want this machine back together as soon as possible so that we can rip it, tater chip it, and you guys can see me hurt myself. I mean, ride this thing. And we'll also see what this thing can really do. I mean, it's 750 cc's worth of pure ponies. I have a couple question and answers from you guys, so I do want to mention that as well. Dawson Rowe, I appreciate your comment. You answered my question about the air box. You said, uh, the window is to seal the old air intake so the air only comes in from the snorkels. That's making a little bit more sense now. William Levi has a concern for the chickens. Unfortunately, Cole ate them. I'm totally kidding. We have more predators than Cole. We have owls, hawks, snakes. I don't know if we have a snake that big enough around here, but we have snakes. What the hell else? Raccoons? They ain't gonna eat a chicken. Are they? Grandma says an armadillo can eat a chicken. You guys let me know in the comment section below about that one. And, and coyotes. I don't know if I'm gonna go with an armadillo. I might go with a raccoon. We started with four, we're down to zero, unfortunately. But now they're in chicken heaven, so they're, they're having a ball. And finally, you guys, about the Duramax, everybody keeps on questioning about that. I don't see what you guys don't like about the chick magnet, the Escape. The Duramax is sitting on standby right now. We don't need it, therefore we're not using it. But I do still own it. I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. Until next time, 3D Machines, the King Quad, out. Yeah.